Animals have been a constant presence in movies, appearing alongside human actors since the moving picture's earliest days. In fact, the very first moving picture was an experiment by the pioneering British photographer Edward Mybridge and featured a galloping racehorse. Animals have even been known to upstage their human co-stars. What's the matter with him? Maybe he thinks you're getting more attention than he is. Bestial Animal Film Stars is the first major exhibition celebrating the menagerie of animals on the silver screen and how they have fascinated generations of moviegoers. The exhibition takes place in La Mole Tower, Turin's landmark and home to Italy's National Museum of Cinema. Gli animali sono così popolari perché puoi proiettare su di loro tutti, tutto quello che l'uomo secondo me ha perso, quindi puoi proiettare sentimenti di innocenza, sentimenti di fedeltà, ci sono delle storie di amicizia e di coppia, perché abbina la capacità del cinema con una capacità di empatia molto forte che tu puoi avere con l'animale, quindi è un doppio sentimento che si mescola, che si unisce potentemente proprio. Cos'è una star animale? cioè come si costruisce una star e cosa c'è dietro la star animale se uno dice Lessi tutti lo conoscono ma chi era Lessi davvero è un'icona che è durata per decenni quindi non può essere stato lo stesso cane e che cane era? a cominciare dal fatto che Lessi doveva, era una femmina nel film ma in realtà era un maschio comincia a capire che costruire un'icona animale è piuttosto complicato e molto spesso ambiguo From Westerns to war films, to anthropomorphism. I want you to listen to Francis. <laughs> listen to Francis, you heard what the man said, muscle head. Horses have been trotted out onto movie sets at the crack of a whip. Petrine Day Mitchum, the daughter of Hollywood legend Robert Mitchum, has written a book about equine thespians called Hollywood Hoofbeats. She says that in the case of horses, W.C. Fields' maxim of never work with children and animals is a non-starter. It takes a particular kind of horse to be a moody horse because they are prey animals, so things like sudden noises and movements can spook them. But um, a horse that is able to tolerate that kind of pressure um, is worth his weight in gold and, and they can be quite, you know, they're quite easy to work with. But I don't know, I've, I've never worked with an, another animal, so I can't, I can't speak to other animals, but um, I think W.C. Fields was wrong. <laughs> no animals were harmed in the making of this movie is another popular movie adage, but it betrays a time when the welfare of animals on set was not always the primary concern of producers. So there were a lot of horses that were unfairly treated and forced to fall by means of wires or pits dug that they didn't know they were going to fall into. And a lot of this went on until um, the charge of the Light Brigade and with a huge charge of horses, hundreds of them were deliberately tripped and many had to be destroyed from broken legs. And Errol Flynn, the star of that movie, was completely outraged and he was, went public with this outrage and that really opened up the public consciousness and that began the beginning of the oversight of the American Humane Association monitoring animals in film. The development of computer-generated imagery, or CGI, replaces the need to put animal and human actors in dangerous situations. It also enhances the possibility of creating fantastical scenarios. CGI was preceded by mechanical robot technology known as animatronics, which itself was preceded by stop-frame animation. When I was 14 years old, I saw the original black and white King Kong late one night and I decided that was what I wanted to do. John Cox is an animatronics expert who won a special effects Oscar for his work on the Australian production Babe. Did they bring in a machine to do the job? Oh, the treachery of it. A mechanical rooster. Oh, dear me. Oh, dear you. Babe was a real landmark film because probably the first time that that many animatronics had been um, specifically character matched to a live animal. So there were um, puppies, dogs, mice, uh, the sheep, both the Border Lester and the Norfolk sheep, uh, the cat, the duck, and the horse and the cow. So these were all specifically matched to living animals and we had to make robot versions of them. 
Cox says that less is more when it comes to making a mechanical animal believable on the big screen. You want to push the performance, you've got to rein it back and make it subtle. Go for things, mainly the eyes, get as much performance as you can out of the eyes and um, the subtlety of body posture. In a puppeteering performance, that will sell the creature as being you know, absolutely alive and one that you can relate to. As well as having their own exhibition, the important role that animals play in the world of cinema has now been extended to them having their own award ceremony, at least for the four-legged canine variety. The Palm Dog Award was established at the Cannes Film Festival more than 15 years ago by the British film journalist Toby Rose. I think it's their loyalty and lack of ego which is in such stark contrast to the human being and I think people that see films will automatically warm to that as they watch people jostling for position whereas the dog is just interested in doing the right thing. Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. So what award-winning qualities do pooches have that make an audience pause for thought? I mean, Lassie, obviously wonderful, Rin Tin Tin, wonderful, Asta, wonderful, and then coming right up to more recent 21st century dog performances, we cannot gainsay Uggy, who is so brilliant, not only great on the big screen, but great for promo, an all-round, everyday movie star that I can relate to. Davide Ferrario, the Italian film director and exhibition co-coordinator, says that the projection of human qualities onto animals in movies can have a profound effect on the way that we see ourselves. The process of anthropomorphization that is subbing the animal, that is making it become more similar to the human, but more far away from the animal. In confronto a questo, pensiamo alla semplicità dello sguardo di Baltazar, io lì capisco che c'è un animale che sta guardando me ed è un rovesciamento di prospettiva che è particolarmente significativo, mentre di solito noi usiamo gli animali per farci un po' i complimenti.